Hello Stampers, my name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and today I'd like to show you how I made this pretty little card. Very simple, um, very contemporary looking and uh, it's it, the, the only decoration on the inside is a stamp of the vase. And so what we need to make this card is I have a piece of basic black here, that's the wrong piece, uh, 11 by 5 and a half, 11 by 4 and a quarter scored and folded at 5 and a half. And this is one we want to burnish really firmly here because I want this card to lay very, very flat. Okay, in addition to this, we need a piece of basic gray that is cut five and three eighths by four and an eighth to layer on the top of our card and give us just a very small border. Then we have a piece of smoky slate, which is four by five and a quarter, and that is the layering piece for the inside. And uh, then we need, in addition to that, a strip of glossy paper and um, that's where we're going to actually get started today is on our glossy paper. I'm going to bring in a little scratch paper here just to make sure I don't make too big a mess and I'm using three of my blends. I'm using the dark black, I'm using the dark granny apple green, and I'm using the dark real red. And what I'm going to do, the um, let's see, the other thing I'm using is the Vase Builder Punch and um, to, uh, to cut out all of our elements here. And um, this, you'll see that the punch on this one is actually quite a bit taller than the one I ended up with this one. And the first try on this, I was trying to keep the flowers inside this little gray piece, but I've decided that that doesn't really matter, so I'm going to use the taller vase this time. So what we need to do in order to make this is I want to take this piece of shiny paper because I hope you can see that in the camera. I think you can as I move it around. I wanted this to be super shiny and this to be super shiny and the rest of it matte so that it would really pop off the page. So this is really an example of contrast and more contrast. Using the gray against the black, using the black vase against the gray, and then just the super big pop of color. And it makes for very dramatic cards when you can do that. So I'm taking my dark black blender pen here, and I'm just going to mark this paper here, going back and forth over it a couple of times. And then I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to take my granny apple green and take the brush end uh, also here. And I'm going to do the same thing in the granny apple green. And this one I'm getting varied uh, colors of green and that's just fine because our leaves often have varied pieces to them. The last one I'm taking is this piece of real red or this real red uh, alcohol blend and I'm putting down a swath of this pretty real red. Okay, that is enough to make at least one card and maybe a couple. All right, then I'm going to take, this actually dries because it's alcohol ink pretty darn fast. So what I'm going to do is take my um, punch here and the thing that I want to do is get out and if you, well, you know what, I'm going to cut these pieces because otherwise I'm not going to be able to get the most efficient use out of this paper. Okay, um, and as such I may need to make myself a little handle which I can do with a post-it note here. What I want to do is get the vase cut here, and I may just not be able to do it, um, but I want to get my one vase cut 
here, my black vase, and I love how shiny that stays. I think out of this piece I might be able to get a second vase, and I think I can. I'll probably have to, yeah, I'll have to use my blend to color in the pieces again a bit. Um, although this vase uh, ends up being this way, so maybe I would cut that vase to be more that kind of a shape. That's kind of interesting. Anyway, um, so there's my vase. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out my leaves. And on this, the leaves are right along this very edge. So I'm going to do the thing and cut the very first one here. And that leaf is very thick. And on this, I, I like the idea of the thinner leaves. So what I'm doing is putting my punch back in and just putting it over what I just cut and taking a sliver. There's the sliver compared to the first leaf. And I like that shape and that size. So I'm going to cut several of these thinner leaves here. Fortunately, they're popping off right onto my desk. And I'm going to cut probably more than I need, but I'd rather have more than not enough and have to come back and do it again. So I'm cutting off quite a few of these thin green leaves. Okay, and then uh, and then I'm going to cut out my little tulips here with my punch, and I'm just cutting three of these tulips. And you'll notice the shape on these tulips is a little different than in my vase, and I'll show you how I did that. So, well, I don't know what happened to that one. So I'm going to cut several of these tulips, and I'll cut an extra one for good measure, just because I, I don't want to be caught short of tulips here. And so, um, let's see if I can do this on this edge and save a little bit of paper. There, that gives us four, one more just for good measure. Okay, there we go. All right, and so those are all the pieces cut that I need. And here are my green leaf stems. Now this one that's kind of thick, I'm not going to eliminate that. I'm going to use my snips and I'm just going to cut this one in half. And since I want lots of foliage in my vase, having uh, shorter ones and longer ones are all good. Okay, now I'm going to take the leaves that I need and my tulips here amazing to me what happened to the other tulips that's all right we've got four and that's more than enough what I did here is on this panel the the basic gray panel I used my layering oval dies and then setting this on this base kind of down in this corner what I did was I tried to leap uh, the, an edge on this side and along the bottom about the, 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 the width of my snail runner <laughs> so that I could, in fact, um, be able to add my adhesive around the edge of this without any trouble. And then I taped this piece into place on my card and I took out my oval. And then out of that oval, what I did was I used this layering oval. This is the largest of the layering ovals. This is one that measures just under three inches. And I took this dark oval and I cut this piece out of it so that you really don't have any extra 
uh, waste here. Uh, you're using just the material on the card. So I've cut my pieces and here they are. So I'll set this to the side and we are ready to put this card together. It's very fast, very, uh, very easy. Um, there's a little bit of cutting here. And what I did was I didn't like how fat these little tulips were. So I came from the bottom with my snips and I came around the top and I snipped off the edge on both sides, trying to hold my tulip shape while I was at it. And kind of rounding my base on my tulip. So there's one, they don't have to be perfect, flowers aren't perfect either. And so coming around here and cutting that down, same thing on the other side following the the shape of the tulip here and making my own skinnier version of the tulip and there we go and then I have my green leaves here which I'm going to pull off to the side and I have my nice vase okay so I'm going to get rid of these little pieces here and we're ready to put our little vase together. So what I did was I used, I put um, a bit of snail on the back of my vase here. And then I try to arrange my leaves first. So uh, going out of the only caveat is that I tried to keep them inside the top part of the vase. So I'm going to do this one a little bit more systematically than I did on that one. And um, where I need the vases, where I need the leaves going different directions, I'm just going to set them on here and have them going out from the center. And once I'm happy with how those look, got a little stray piece of paper in there, I'm going to take a dimensional here or two, because what I've got here are the minis, and I'm going to set those dimensionals down towards the top of the vase and over all of my stems. So there we go. Now they feel fairly secure, and I'm going to add one more right behind everything there to hold that one in place. I feel fairly comfortable that those aren't going anywhere now. All right, and then I'm going to set um, glue dots down here on the center and at the bottom of my vase. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. All right, now what we're going to need to do is to do our stamping. So I've got two little bits of stamping to do on this piece. I'm going to use my embossing buddy here at the top of my piece of basic gray. And then I took my um, message today that I'm using which is from Home to Roost. And it says, enjoy the simple moments. And I thought that went so well with this simple little vase. So I have my Versamark ink here. And I'm going to ink up my sentiment and set that down right here at the top of my work. and put pressure all along. While it's not a giant 
stamp it is long <laughs> and there we go enjoy the simple moments and then I have my black embossing powder here and I'm just going to get a little black embossing powder on there and there we go then I have a little brush here that I'm going to use to tap off some of that excess the thing is with black it pays to go over it sometimes even if you don't see the little pieces because there's no way to walk back from that <laughs> And then I'll use my heat gun and I'll quiet the video while I put this sentiment down. Okay, then I'm going to take my light gray piece and then I have from my varied vases or vibrant vases uh, stamp set, I'm going to ink up this vase here, put it in the corner here and do the same thing. I'm going to get a little black embossing powder on that vase. This before we got started. Because in the other one I just stamped the vase in and on this one I decided I wanted to go ahead and Okay, and the fact that that's shiny kind of brings the inside to the outside uh, or the outside to the inside, <laughs> whichever way you want to say it. Um, and um, I think that helps tie the, the, uh, the card together. Now that this is dry, I'm going to wipe away some of that embossing buddy um, material and I'm going to use my uh, you know I'm going to use liquid glue on this, I've decided, because that's such a thin border. I want to make sure that I get it down right where I want it. So I'm going to use my liquid glue here uh, on the outside and right around the oval here on the inside of the card and set this piece in place. And that gives me just a second to kind of wiggle this around and make sure I've got the kind of border that I really want to have on this. Then uh, on this piece, this piece I'm going to lay down flat on the inside of here. And then I'm going to lay this piece on top. So on this one, I am going to use just a bit of snail here. I just want to make sure I get most of my edges covered pretty well here. And I did set this a bit offset down here in the corner because I thought visually that was a little bit more interesting. And already it's pretty because of the contrast of the black and white. But then when we get ready to put down our pretty vase and our little flowers here. Okay, I'm going to stick my vase down, bring back my little flowers here, and decide where I'm going to put them. And um, let's see, I'm going to use mini dimensionals here, and I'm going to cut these mini dimensionals in half. Okay, so there is the front of our card done. And as I look at this, I realize that what I should have done when I finished punching out this vase, so I'm going to try and do this very carefully, and that is I can see a little bit of the white around the edge of this paper, and that's going to just bug me. 
So I'm going to use my marker here and just go over those edges. And note to self here, uh, once you cut out your vase, while it's easy to do, go around your edges and get rid of any of that white cardstock that is showing. Okay, living dangerously there. <laughs> All right, so there is the front of our card. Here is the inside, and just that fast we have this pretty dramatic little card. And I think, I don't know about you, but where we are, we've had so much winter. I'm so ready for green and spring. And this was representative for me coming out of the dark into what's light and bright and springy. Just made my heart happy today. So I'm going to add this piece to the inside of my card here. Trying to get my border straight. And there we go. There we have the card and our project for the day. And I will say that I'm much happier with the taller vase. You'll have to tell me what you think. Um, but that is the card and that is the project for today. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it. Um, and if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. And or you could join my team. We've got a couple weeks left on the join offer that's $175 worth of product for $99. And then every time you order, you get a 20% discount. And so there's all kinds of wonderful things that come from being a demonstrator. Um, be happy to talk to you about it. My number's always below the video. And uh, the prize draw for this month is the Wonderful Romance Bundle stamp set and die set. So thanks again for stopping by, and I'll be back soon with more cards and more projects. Bye!